dear student today we will see two methods of job sequencing that is spt method and edd method so job sequencing is very essential part for decision makers because if you not properly assign right job for right person or right job for right machine we can say then it is not possible not possible for us to use effectively the human resource as well as the machine so as a decision maker you have to identify proper job sequence that should be assigned to a proper machine so that the machine utilization will be more and the machine idle time will be minimum or you can say the job delay should be very less so for that different methods were used uh, n job on one machine n job on two machine n job on three machine there are different methods to process n jobs on number of machines so today we will see n jobs on single machine using spt method spt is nothing but shortest processing time method so before starting the example we will see the basic terminology is used in job sequencing so in job sequencing the first terminology is used that is number of machines number of machines are nothing but number of servers who are serving the jobs who are processing the jobs that may be a machine that may be a human be a resource so those servers the proce processors are nothing but number of machines the processing time second terminology is nothing but time required to complete this job is called as processing job time required to complete a single job is called as processing time processing order means in what order we have to process the jobs means how the jobs comes in in the workstation in the same order if you are you are processing or there are some other methods like shorter processing time like earliest due date or first come first serve what is the processing order you have to decide third one is idle time idle time is nothing but free time for the machine when the machine is processing the end jobs during his processing whether some machines remains idle or not to identify that idle time is used and last one is elapsed time when you start the first job and complete the last job time elapsed between these two activities starting the job and finishing all jobs that time duration is called as elapsed time so these are the basic terminologies you should be familiar with so that the further discussion will be easy to understand then in in job sequencing some assumptions were made the first assumption is that only one operation is carried out on a machine at a particular time so single machine can process single job at a time this is the first assumption second assumption is that each operations once started must be completed means you cannot stop the any job operation at middle and you can you cannot start another job so once you assign the job once you started the job till the job finishes you have to wait for machine to get free and last one is an operation must be complete before succeeding operation can start means the which job we have assigned to machine that job must complete and once the job is completed then the second job you have to load on the machine so these are some assumptions in case of job sequencing now we'll see one simple example of spt method shorter processing time method processing n jobs on one machine using spt method that is shortest processing time method six jobs p q r s t and u have been received for manufacturing factory to be processed on a single machine their processing times are job p requires 7 minutes job q requires 6 minutes job r requires 80 minutes so the job names and their corresponding processing times are given so here they have asked determine optimum sequence as per spt method so what should be the job sequence using shortest processing time method is the first point you have we have to explain second one determine flow time or completion time of the job this is flow time or completion and completion time is nothing but elapsed time we can say how much time will be required to complete all jobs determine the mean flow time how to calculate mean flow time what is the formula for that we will see and last determine the average in process inventory or determine the average job in process inventory means how much how what is the average job 
that is available in inventory or in that particular manufacturing organization per minute. So we'll solve this example. First, what you have to do, we have given that the jobs and their processing times are given. So as per the shortest processing time rule, what is shortest processing, shortest processing time rule? You have to observe all processing times of provided N jobs. And out of that, which time is minimum one? Which job is having minimum process time? That job you have to process first. So in this case, job T is having minimum processing time. So job T we have to process first. Then job S is having minimum time. So job S yes should be processed at sequence number two. Job U is having third minimum value or third minimum processing time. So you have to process job U. In this fashion, you have to identify the job sequence from minimum processing time to maximum processing time. So you will get the proper job sequence. Then, once you identify the job sequence, we have to identify other remaining things. What are the other values that they have asked? They have asked you the process completion time, average time, and all those things. So we have to prepare one table. The first column of the table should be the jobs. The job sequence that you have obtained using SPT method, in this fashion, you have to write the job sequence. First, we have to process job T, then yes, U, Q, P, and R. In this fashion, we have to process the job. Then time required for processing job T is given in example. So for job T, time required is three minutes. Job S, yes, time required is four minutes. So all those times you have to update here in case of processing time. So these times are given in our example. Now the third point that is flow or completion time you have to calculate. Means what? How much time jobs T will require to complete? Three minutes. So we have written over here three. Then how much time job yes will be get completed? Job yes requires four minutes. But to start the job yes, we have to wait for three minutes to complete the T job. So three minutes plus four minute is nothing but seven minute. Likewise, job U will be start after seventh minute and it requires five minutes. So seven plus five is 12. So in this session, you have to add cumulative processing times or we can also call this is as a flow or completion time. So when job T is processing, how many jobs are waiting? When job T is processing the Actually, this T job is not completed. So job T is under process and remaining five jobs, one, two, three, four, five. So total six jobs to be completed. In case of yes, yes will be started when T is finished. Yes will be started when T is finished. So at the time of yes job, five jobs will be in complete state. In case of U job, four jobs will be in incomplete state. Likewise, you have to identify how many jobs will be incomplete when the current job will be under process. Once you identify the flow completion time and jobs as and jobs to be complete, then the next formula is total completion or elapsed of time is equal to how much maximum time is required? All jobs will get completed at 33 minutes. So that 33 is nothing but my elapsed of time. To complete all jobs on a single machine, how much time will be required? 33 minutes. That is my first answer. Total alias time, so our total completion time will be 33 minutes. In 33 minutes, all job gets completed. Second, average flow time. Average flow time can be calculated by addition of all flow times, addition of all flow times divided by number of jobs. How many number of jobs are there? There are six jobs. So if I do the addition of three plus seven plus 12 plus 18 plus 25 plus 33, 4 divided by number of jobs, that is 6, I will get 16.33 minutes. So, average flow time will be 16.33 minutes. Next, average in process inventory or average jobs in process inventory can be calculated by formula. We have to multiply. We have to multiply processing time into jobs to be complete. In when the job T is processing, at the time, the time required for job T is three minutes. And at that time, how many jobs are waiting? Six jobs. So three into six. 
plus 4 into 5 plus 5 into 4 plus 6 into 3 plus 7 into 2 plus 8 into 1 whole divided by we have to do the addition of all processing time whole divided by processing time 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 if you solve this example expression you will get average jobs in process inventory is equal to 3 jobs so in this fashion you can solve job sequencing problem for n job on one machine using spt method so if you have any doubts regarding how to solve this example you can call me on my mobile number my mobile number is 9850098225 my name is dr bj moiti so today we'll stop here we'll see the next example of job sequencing on single machine on n job that is using earliest due date method in next presentation thank you